I'm Ronyo. I'm Duran. And today we're going to talk about the top 10 most common misconceptions about Native Americans. Obviously, I can't believe I'm Native American. <laughs> Probably or not. Not, but, you know, most people with black people think they have some Native Americans in them. And they don't. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to leave that alone. However, we do have Duran, who is a Native American pill. I want to kind of go over this video that I've seen of the top 10 misconceptions and then kind of get your thoughts on whether they're true or not, and then also ask some other further questions the, that may come across in this video and also get some clarification on that as well. Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Top 10's Net, and in the video today, we're looking at the top 10 common misconceptions about Native Americans. Native Americans have been featured in many different forms of popular culture. Unfortunately, as most people only know of them through said popular culture, the worldwide perception of them includes an incredible amount of errors and misconceptions. This is made more difficult by the fact that there are so few of them left, making it difficult for them to have a voice and dispel the myths surrounding them. That's myths very true. such as Number 10. They want to be called Native Americans. While Native American is often used in the USA as a politically correct term, it is not accepted by many actual natives. In Canada, they are called things such as First Nations, which is less offensive because it does not refer to them as Americans, but it has still not been completely accepted by the native people. If you shouldn't call them Native Americans, then well, what should you call them? Now, unfortunately, as with many things in life, there is no simple answer to this question. It is unlikely that all the natives will ever agree very interesting um so let me start off with my first question do native americans really want to be called native americans? some and, do and some don't okay why or why not my grandmother for example and grandfather would adamantly cling to the term indian I mean, it's, I, I, I guess. But they would also refer to themselves by their tribes. Okay. See? And and I think that's one of the, and maybe he's going to touch on this. You have to remember, just like our discussion of Africa, that they, they were not a homogenous group. They were not as fractured as people like to think, though. And actually, the map we're looking at is blatantly, it, it's a snapshot in time, and it's very wrong as a, result of that also a lot of these names are um not used anymore because they're offensive for example the uh, my wife papago uh, that's the spanish term for them it's effectively bean people or bean eater it's not a they were the original bean mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry i i joke I joke occasionally with her about this, but they were the original bean eaters. When people call Mexicans beaners or bean eaters, it's actually not right. What mm. what they mean to be doing is saying that the Papago from the, but obviously that's a, a an insulting thing. But the Papago were called the bean. They were called Papago by the Spanish because they grew beans, lots of okay. beans. So uh, I, I find it ironic that it's a very small tribe. It's a, an incredibly small tribe. And they were in the desert. I, I just find it ironic that all, uh, all Mexicans get called beaners or things of that nature based off of a very small tribe that was part of Mexico for a short period of time before the United States took that area from Mexico. But anyway, okay, they, so, they prefer to be called by their tribe. Okay, so are all Native Americans or Indians considered Mexicans, Latinos, or? No, no, no. No, okay, so that, that's a, I guess it's maybe a complicated question, but we're staring at the right map for this discussion. So when we look at this, who gets called Latino is a very weird thing because Mexico, as hopefully everyone remembers from their history class, Mexico actually owned a substantial portion of the United States for a very long time. It kind of switched hands between, I say Mexico, I mean Spain. It, it, Spain did, and then it became Mexico. Uh, and it switched hands between Spain, France, and Mexico 
depending on who the United States was at war with, to try to reduce how much of that land would go to the United States. It's its own okay. thing. Everyone who's called Latino, that's people from Latin America, typically. So you're talking from current Mexico down, but that's not actually accurate because Latino is, uh, it's kind of like a, it's, uh, it's hard to describe, but it's kind of like a shared cultural thing. And it speaks in part to the history. It speaks in part to the ancestry and it speaks in part to the culture. It's, it's a very complicated term if you really think about it, but if if you take that into account, then really many of the Native Americans across Arizona, New Mexico, Nevada, uh, especially Southern California in that group, Texas, and even as far north as Colorado, many of them should rightfully be called Latino, Latina, because they were very heavily influenced by the Spanish and Mexican culture. But typically, if you were to start throwing that term around for people in the United States, unless they are from Central or South America, you'll get funny looks from different people to include possibly the people you're calling Latino. But the the Navajo, the Apache, they the Apache fought against the Spanish, but they were still heavily influenced by them, ridiculously influenced by them, especially the religious aspect of it. The... Uh, Odin, which is what the Papago prefer to be called, but that's their name. And by the way, most of the tribe names simply mean the people, the race, uh, things of that nature. You see that actually true even with what most European tribes would call themselves at, at the time. Everyone else was the other. Okay. <laughs> which is interesting. You see that in Africa too? Like okay. it's South Africa, the the different terms, like when people say uh, Ubuntu, I don't think they actually understand what what that means and the different conjugations of the term, because they probably wouldn't have called themselves Ubuntu if they did <clears throat> that the operating system. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> but I, yeah, so long story short, L Latino is a very complicated term is a very complicated term. In my opinion, and this is just my personal opinion, a lot of the tribes, especially in the southwestern United States, are Latino. They were heavily influenced by the Mexican tribes, very heavily influenced. There's no essence or buts about it. They okay. share that culture. They share that identity. The other thing that a lot of people don't know is you wouldn't stay with your tribe your whole life, typically. That didn't come until much later on. If So my grandparents would talk about this actually quite a bit. So if you were done and you felt like maybe you weren't getting something from where you were, you'd just go move to a different group. And it could be completely different, absolutely, totally different. And you'd be with them now because they align with where you are in your life. Maybe you want to settle down and have a family. Maybe you want to go on more raids. Maybe you want to participate in more war so you get a name for yourself. So you would move around or maybe you married someone and you just want to get away from them. And I mean, some people might think that's a joke, but it's actually true if if your marriage just wasn't working out, you could just up and leave. And every Indian was their own person. They were probably one of, they were libertarian before libertarian was a thing in the United States. And this used to be the way with European tribes, with uh, African tribes. I don't know, but I would, well, actually I do know. With a lot of the Asian tribes up on the steps, but I don't know about for China and Japan, for example, their, their civilization has been more um, static for a very long time than these other groups.
So it's a little harder to talk about that. Something else with just seeing this map, uh, where did the term American come from? Uh, obviously, I, of course, I don't think they just called themselves Native Americans. They went by the tribe. So where did that term come from for people that don't know? Uh, Italian map maker. Ah, so they just came here and called this America and then started calling the people that were here Native Americans. Yeah, well, I mean, they called them Indian. Native American is a very, very new term. Some like the term, some don't. I typically will use that over Indian, and I only do that. My grandmother would never, she'd probably get really mad at you if you called her a Native American. She would never use that term. Never. But you have to understand the reason why I use Native American over Indian, for example, is you have too many immigrants from India and it becomes very confusing when you're calling yourself Indian, but you're not from India. Whereas back when throughout her entire life, you didn't have many Indian immigrants. You certainly didn't have them where she lived which was in the Midwest. And so it wasn't a problem. Whereas, uh, and I mean, she would, like I said, she'd openly call herself Sue instead and things of that nature. She'd do that. She'd do Indian. Um, she'd use other terms for herself, but I, I just native American for me makes, I don't like the term first nations. I understand that people in Canada are more, likely to use it i don't like that i just i don't like it but i i think indian today is too confusing and and calling yourself by your tribe is ridiculous because most native americans today first of all are in fact none are pure blood and i challenge anyone who claims to be pure blood to actually get a real dna test and actually do their genealogy because there haven't been pure blood Native Americans in a very long time, a very long time. They, it just, and in fact, like my, my wife, we did her genealogy and in the Dawes rolls, her great, great grandparents are both listed as being 100%, but it's actually impossible. They weren't 100% and they couldn't have been 100%. There are reasons for that. I'm not going to get into it, but I know that that wasn't accurate when they claimed it. But when they said 100%, it was more, I am Audem. My wife is Audem. We are both Audem. It wasn't, they didn't think of it from the perspective of, you know, my grand, my, my parents, one of my parents was white, which is how it tended to be. And that's the Audem. So you're talking about people in the desert in the southwestern corner of the United States, the middle of nowhere. They weren't 100% back then, and they aren't 100% today. There was way too much mixing. A lot of the tribes would steal white babies because, I mean, that's what you would do. And then you'd raise them. We talked a little bit about that. Um, yeah. I, but... So I find it problematic to call yourself by your tribe or even more so by your clan. That makes sense if you live on a reservation. Most Native Americans don't live on reservations anymore. You'll find more in the cities than on the reservations because like we talked about previously, the reservations aren't great places. They're not. The vast majority of them are. And even the ones that have casinos aren't great places because with casinos and gambling comes, of course, a lot of crime. Uh, so I... But... But because Native Americans would switch, they'd go from this clan or this clan to that one or this tribe to that tribe to a, a related tribe. You weren't wed to a tribe. That's a new thing. And your tribe wasn't didn't statically own this place. Like, you know, they find they find ancestors in some place and then they hand them over to the current tribe that's in charge of that area. And I'm going, but they weren't there. 2000 years ago it was a different tribe why are you doing this why why did they get to claim that ancestor when it's all of uh, first of all the way my my grandparents always said it we were all one people they were adamant about that we're all one people and it was all of us but at the same time 
you know, that's not yours. Your people weren't there. Your people migrated here. It, there was so much movement all around the United States, really before Europeans came, but especially after Europeans came, because the the bringing of horses made a huge impact. The bringing of firearms, which were openly traded with the Native Americans, huge impact on the power struggles that many of these tribes were already having. And that's where you see the Lakota get pushed out. That's where you see the uh, the uh, Seneca get forced to move. That's where you see the Apache get kicked out of Canada. The Apache were Canadians. They get kicked out of Canada and have to move into the desert. The same with Kiowa. They were Canada. They were not in the Southwest. The Lakota were not there. The Lakota got pushed. So... Anyway, long story short, I, I don't think it makes sense to to call yourself by your your tribe either. But what do I know? Last thing about this really quickly is seeing this map, and I know you said it's probably it's probably not accurate to date to this time. So it, cause I didn't really know this. So obviously they were spread across this a whole America. Yeah. Is that true? Okay. Mm-hmm. So before anybody came over here, this was pretty much all of Native American land. Yes. This whole state. Yes. I mean, yes. Yes. Uh, so you, you have to remember if you talk incredibly inhospitable places like the deserts, you had the Audem, you had my, uh, my father's people were in the desert, depending on which people you were talking about. The out near the Guadalajara, things of that nature. You have, of course, on the northern realm, the Inuits and uh, other tribes. So they were spread out across all of the United States to include both really bad land and really nice land. That's why there were... So no one knows how many Native Americans there were. Nobody. Uh, Especially not in North America. I'm going to ignore Mexico for a minute and Central, what I'll call Central America, even though Central America is, of course, part of North America. Talking about the United States, such as it is today and on up into Canada, no one knows how many Native Americans there were. Originally, when they first came, they estimated, I think, um, something like, 250 million to 500 million. But that was based on the populations in the eastern seaboard. But what you have to understand is the eastern seaboard is considerably more hospitable than the southwest, the southwest being arid and desert. There's There were far fewer people there. So when, and the other thing was, just like in Africa, sub-Saharan Africa, Prior to the arrival of Europeans, you would see massive disease and starvation just sweep across tribes and regions and kill a lot of people. That's actually why you saw the pilgrims manage to so easily make alliances was because a horrible number one warfare which was terrible plus they had just had a massive disease wipe out large portions of their population so they were looking for someone to align with who would help them defeat their enemies you see the same thing with when the uh, spanish conquistadors came to mexico what is now mexico they managed to there were i think it was 600 600 conquistadors did not take over the aztecs it was actually mostly the groups that were already at war with the Aztecs, who already didn't like the Aztecs, plus the, um, what do you call it, uh, vassal states of the Aztecs, who helped the conquistadors defeat the Aztec armies and helped them in great numbers. And they did that because, of course, they wanted their own freedom. They wanted... They had historical grievances, which goes to another problem. You know, their historical grievances were a thing. Uh, we were killing each other long before anyone showed up. 
Yeah. That's not to say that that doesn't justify anything other than to say the myth that Native Americans were one peaceful, homogenous society is just that. It's a myth. It's Anyway. All right. Interesting. Just wondered because I had never seen this map before. So that's very interesting. On a scholarly term to be used for all of them because there are hundreds of different tribes and they all have different opinions. Ultimately, any PC word is a catch-all term used mainly when speaking very generally. In truth, most of them would prefer you address them by the name of their tribe, of which there are untold numbers. So I guess it's time to get studying. Number 9. They were war-hungry savages In popular media, the stereotype of a Native American is easily recognizable. Tomahawk, bow and arrow, feathers in the hair, and a thirst to scalp you. So that uh, image we just saw was of a Native American who had a scalp in his hand. You'll hear some people claim that scalping was brought over by Europeans, and that's actually not true. Europeans did scalp heavily. That, that, by the way, is true. Europeans heavily scalped. They did a lot of scalping with Native Americans. They did other things that I'm not going to discuss. The term coin purse, for example, uh, originates from a uh, part of human anatomy that Europeans would take off of uh, dead Native American males and turn into a coin purse. I'm not going to go into any further details, but scalping was actually actively practiced and we have the earliest records and we actually have archaeological evidence that backs this up where just like what you would see in all across europe and i'm sure africa sub-saharan africa did this as well for whatever reason this seems to be a thing humans like to do i don't understand it but i mean this is modern times it's not something we've done in a long time what you would do is you would take the uh, scalp from someone you killed and then you would put it on a pole and there were two different ways depending on the different cultures and time periods it changed you'd either have it on poles going around your camp or you would put it on your house if you were talking for example the the celts or celts they would put it either on poles or they would stick it on their house they had a kind of like a a long housey kind of thing and you would stick it on the entryways to the house it Native Americans, you would see them do the same thing. Either it would be on poles going around or it would be on a house like the Lakota. You'd stick it on your uh, the tent poles for your teepee, whereas some other tribes had a longhouse-like thing and they would stick it on the, the entryway to the longhouse. So this is something that people have always done. Just I thought that was interest, maybe interesting to someone. Yeah, definitely. The thing is, however, that many Native American tribes were very peaceful, and some of the tribes who went to war only did so after the Europeans came to America and upset the balance of things, often trying to take lands from the native people who had a much different oh idea of land All right, ownership. Can we pause this? <laughs> okay, he himself is speaking propaganda, and it's horrible propaganda that I absolutely hate because, like I just talked about, I mean, did I not? I just, that's weird. I just finished discussing why anyone aligned themselves with the pilgrims, why anyone aligned themselves with the conquistadors. And here he is. Okay, so there were some tribes that were peaceful. The Audim, for example, were known to be particularly peaceful. That's why they moved out into the desert. One of the easiest ways to figure out if a group of people are peaceful is if they live in incredibly inhospitable environments. Okay. The reason why people do that is not of their own volition, but to escape others. So mm -hmm. when you have people move to the frozen tundras, for example, of Siberia or of North America, that typically indicates that it's a group that is peaceful. The alternative is it's a group that was kicked out and pushed into that area because they were very warlike and everyone around them banded together and pushed them out of the nice area into the garbage area that's actually what happened to the aztecs so originally the aztecs were not in central mexico they and the reason why the the reason why mexico city is built on a swamp is because the aztecs were kicked out of their original I say original, but you know what I mean, because they're, 
these things were never static. They were always dynamic. They were kicked out of their original homeland. And when they were pushed out, they were pushed into this jungle area that was full of snakes, which is why, by the way, the name that everyone around them called them was snake eaters. Because what happened was uh, these tribes that had pushed them out thought that they would just basically die in a hole, so to speak, that they would all die in this nasty, inhospitable land, which had nothing really to eat. But it turned out that the Aztecs thrived eating snakes. Mm. That's crazy. Yes. So <laughs> the the peaceful thing, yes, there were some tribes that were peaceful. There were some groups that were peaceful toward the United States, but that doesn't mean that they were peaceful, period. The Dutch, so on my mother's side, uh, some of her ancestors were the original founders of New Amsterdam, which, of course, you now know as New York, right. New York City specifically. So they actually tried to be very peaceful. There were two camps. One camp did, per our previous discussion about religion, one camp was, you know, we have to kill those dirty, filthy, uh, God-hating savages and the other camp was the exact opposite, uh, opposite, saying we need to make peace with them and all this other stuff. My mother's ancestors were actually, one of them was a doctor, for example, and they were very much pro-peace. The problem was, the while they, they paid good money, by the way, for the land, some of the tribes nearby decided that, hey, you know what? We want to take the land back by force because they raided and that was a major part of the culture of many of these tribes. And that's been the case with every tribe. Again, Europe, you saw the same exact thing. Where do you think the Huns come from? Uh, in Or the Romans. They, <laughs> what they did was raid the entire continent of Europe. <laughs> you know, uh, but the, I like Rome, just saying. The uh, the big thing was they wound up killing the Native Americans, wound up killing a lot of people. And eventually the Dutch did decide to go to war against the tribes that kept going to war against them. So this is itself propaganda. It's partially right, but it's also wrong at the same time. You'll see the same thing with the Okinawans. We, you'll hear people oftentimes say the Okinawans were uh, peace-loving people until the Americans came in and occupied it. And that's actually grossly inaccurate. The Okinawans were a series of different kingdoms. They went through their own warring states, period. Shuri, the kingdom of Shuri, won. When Shuri won, they then forced their language on everyone else within the Ryukyu Ark, which is what it's called. And they forced their culture on everyone in the Ryukyu art uh, arc everyone in the Ryukyu arc so we always like to talk about peaceful people and all this other stuff but I'll tell you almost to a teen no matter who you look at it's always a myth the Audem were peaceful as these things go but they had a big massacre of a bunch of Apache mostly women and children on uh a reservation actually when they got the chance because it was a revenge killing for the fact that the Apache had been doing absolutely horrible things to the Audem, enslaving them, murdering, torture, uh, rape for a very long time. So I don't ever buy into this peace loving stuff. I don't know of any human tribe anywhere that was ever truly completely peace loving. The length and depth of the propaganda to make the natives look savage was incredible, and it worked completely. The Europeans invaded native lands, and yet even today, the most common image of a Native American is a warlike stereotype. Number 8. They weren't that unadvanced. 
Another common misconception is that Native Americans were primitive people, and many people view their society as similar to that of a third world country. This view could not be further from the truth. The Native Americans had a very advanced society, with medicine, trading, farming, and many other things that were common in European culture. They just did things differently, and it is important to understand that different does not necessarily mean primitive. The French had a fair amount of respect for the natives and mainly traded furs with them. They understood that the natives were not lesser people than them. In fact, they understood that there were some things that the natives had a better grasp on than they did. He's he's right. Uh, there's a little bit of a problem. When we talk Native Americans, we oftentimes exclude Central America. We exclude South America. And I don't know why, because they are Native Americans. My brother-in-law is as much a Native American as I am. Actually, he's more than I am, because he's a larger percentage and... Uh, so on and so forth. But the, the point being, my brother-in-law is a Native American just like I am. Just because he was born and raised in Ecuador, just because his people were from Ecuador, his tribe was from Ecuador, doesn't mean he's not Native American. This is a problem I have with the United States government as a whole, is to call yourself a Native American. And we talked about this a little bit. Call yourself a Native American here in the United States, you have to belong to a tribe. The problem with that is the way to belong to a tribe is to live on a reservation and a whole bunch of other things that, that go with it, ancestry, et cetera, et cetera. It depends. Every tribe is different as to what the uh, membership requirements are. But that's wrong because Native American are a people. They are not people who live on a reservation. And that is a way to, in my opinion, force us to remain on reservations, which is not what's best for us as a people. In my personal opinion, I know a lot of people would disagree with me. I believe we can keep our culture alive. I believe we can keep our identity alive off reservation. And I also believe that our culture has always been evolving. So, and it has been. So I don't believe that our culture should remain static. Uh, I don't I don't need to have long hair and braids like what my grandmother would would say and like what Zikala Shah would say about having your hair cut short being uh, like a coward. I don't believe that we have to do that in order to be Native Americans. I, I believe that it's who we are. It's inherent to us and it's the stories that we tell, et cetera, that really matter, not not necessarily how we dress or how we have ourselves. I think that is a part of our culture. It is, I think it is something important to remember, but I don't, I don't believe it's our cultures were all very complicated and that's to his point. And he's also right. The French actually were generally more laissez faire about the whole thing. Most native American tribes were in the United States and up were fairly libertarian uh, every man was his own thing. And those societies were very complicated. Some were very advanced and some were more nomadic. Nomads tend to be less technologically advanced. When we look at the Huns, for example, in general, they were less technologically advanced. In fact, that's actually why Attila waged war on Rome. One of his big goals he openly stated was to bring the light of Rome into his empire. And by the light, he was, of course, talking about the technological advances. That's why when Attila did what he did, he actually made sure he had hot baths built all across the Hunnic Empire. And a lot of he imported a lot of the Roman technology with him that it doesn't make them less than it just means they had different priorities, but he is right. A lot of medicines came from native Americans, of course, in Central America and South America, you had immense empires with insane amounts of science and technology, absolutely ridiculous amounts of science and technology. We saw the same thing though in the America in North America, there are beautiful native American sites that are very scientifically built absolutely wonderful we had some beautiful settlements in illinois indiana in ohio uh, virginia 
wonderful settlements. A lot of them are gone. That, but that doesn't mean that they ran around. You know, mine did run around naked for a period of time. But that doesn't mean everyone's did. I should say. But that doesn't mean that they ran around naked and, um, you know, were backwards savages. It technologically. They had a lot of advances. They just didn't have the same things. Not having the same things is different than not being advanced, if that makes sense. Right. So I agree with this point. I, I think, I guess, really to conclude at least this segment, uh, from my perspective, I mean, and a lot of this goes back to the prior videos we watched. You do have to be careful when you get your information from YouTube. It's all of the stuff we're talking about is incredibly nuanced. What someone wants to be called it depends on who you talk to and there are always reasons for why they want to be called what they want to be called it's the the important thing though is to recognize that you don't have to call someone something just because they say it yeah you don't i mean i guess you know a lot, a lot of people prefer you know to be called certain things but my thing is just to go on this point of where you get your information from uh, and it could be, I guess it could also not be true if you got it from the source, but wouldn't it be better if you actually had somebody who was Native American actually talking about the culture than somebody who wasn't? That was you know, weird, I, wasn't I, it? I, yes. Like <laughs> you, you talk about something that, you know, you're you're not even from that culture and you don't really know much. So it'd be better getting your information from some people who actually been you know, that are Native American or actually in certain cultures. I mean, it just makes more sense because then, as you said, they're spreading these propagandas that are not true. And probably because they think what they heard or was written was true, but they wasn't there. They're not even a part of the tribe. Right. Or a part of different tribes or the culture, or they're not even a Native American or whatever they want to call it. But it's just kind of weird to me. That's, that's why I say you kind of got to, Thread lightly when you're trying to figure out whether things are real or not. You do, but even if you talk to someone who's Native American, very few Native Americans know their history, mm. their history, and and know their culture. And a large part of that was on purpose, both from the tribes and from Europeans. It was a combined effort, and we talked a little bit about that when we read Zikala Shah's stuff, if, if I would actually encourage everyone to go through and read some of the writings of her, for example, because if you haven't, there are many things that you would, you would not know and would not understand because she was during that transition time period and she saw it and she talked about how the transition was done willingly by the Native Americans, but it was piecemeal. It was what they felt comfortable with. And this is how it has always been. The United States now, you're seeing anime become more mainstream. You know, Japanese um, cartoons being more mainstream. And Hantai, which is the Japanese comic books, becoming more mainstream. And it's because the culture is deciding to change and evolve. And this is what all cultures do. And that's why I said earlier, I mean, you... I. Native Americans shouldn't be static. They shouldn't be static. But many Native Americans do not know where they came from. And it is harder and harder because there are fewer Native Americans. And because most of this kind of goes back to what we talked about with the, uh, the first video on the greatest lie ever told about Africans. Yeah. Where I said... It's not the job of Europeans to go through and, and tell Africans their history. That's that's imperialistic, honestly. Yeah. I think the same is true with Native Americans, but to a large degree, we've been forced to hear from Europeans about our. I say Europeans. I mean, you know, Americans about ourselves and about our culture. And the only way you can talk about the complex societies that were Native Americans is either talking about a specific tribe, not even region, a specific tribe, and even then usually a specific clan, 
or talk about them in broad strokes. That's life. That's the only way you can talk about Europeans. We talk about European history and it's generally fairly broad and we'll zoom in and broad and zoom in. We do the same thing with Native Americans where it's, it's very broad and then it zooms in. You'll see them zoom in and say, oh, well, Native Americans of the Northwestern Pacific, Native Americans of this, Native Americans. It, it, that's the only way we can talk about people. And it's not, but it's not America's job to inform us who we are. It's our job to tell everyone who we are and to tell ourselves. And you're right. It's a little weird to be hearing it from him, but. Yeah. I mean, but again, we go back to say that use your own brain, mm -hmm. you know, do your own discovery and research and you come up with your own conclusion. But this is our time. I'm Ronyo. I'm Duran. And if you haven't already, please like, comment, subscribe to our channel for more episodes like this. Till next time. Have fun.